100% pure rock. 107.7, The Bone. I heard that it took extra long to make the album because of like the throat condition. Uh, no, that was yeah. a, that was a previous album. Like after like our second record, I went through a lot of issues with the throat and I had like tonsillectomy and all that crap. But on this record, the reason why it took so long is because we basically made it twice. Um, we weren't happy with the results that we got the first time around. Like the quality control kind of wasn't as stringent as it has been in the past. And I just, being the type of person, I couldn't live with anything unless it's the best it can be, you know. So we just decided, fuck it, let's do it again. So we did. And so were you cool. unhappy with like the songs, the way you would arrange them and put them together, or were you unhappy with the production? The production, really. I mean, Don's the type of guy who likes to get things done quick. And he's the kind of. Not in a bad way, don't get me wrong, I love Don, we're making our new record with them again, so it couldn't be that bad, right? But, um, then I was just very much kind of like, just moment it'll do kind of thing, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect to be a great record. But as a metal musician, that doesn't work with me, you know? Everything, you know, being a, a, a guitar player in a metal band, everything has to be super precise. You know, not like robotic, Yeah. but if I'm not happy with it, I have to live with that forever, you know, and if there's something in there, I know I could have been a little bit better for the sake of a minute and another take. Well, and you have to play it 172 it times over the next year. Exactly, so, so and that's why really, it wasn't like a huge long process, but, you know, it's, it's important that we're happy with it as much as Are you as able to pinpoint else. kind of what the big difference was between the first version that you scrapped and the second version that you ended up with? Um, well, we only like did like, like, Stupid, not stupid stuff, but we tried different things, like doing one guitar aside rather than two, and stuff like that, because we wanted to make it sound a little bit different, but then when we actually did that, we kind of thought, well, this doesn't sound as good as anything we've done in the past, so why are we going backwards? So unless, you know, unless we're constantly moving forward in quality and progression and stuff, we didn't see the point in doing that. So we're like, okay, let's just do it again. Now, in knowing that about you, uh, in the previous album, was it really hard to sit on that record while you were while your throat was healing, or did you want to go in and tweak it constantly? Um, I was so wrapped up in this that I wasn't really even Didn't thinking about anything attention. else. No, so. like it literally just went in a bubble until yeah, you got yeah. better. Yeah, I was kind of in a really crappy place mentally, like no confidence. Like I thought my career was over, so I had to just kind of deal with all those little demons while I was trying to make a record at the same time, and it kind of suffered in a way. But it's kind of cool that it did actually mark a point in our career. Like many bands have an album where it kind of it's a little bit kind of oh, it's like a tattoo. It's like an earring. Yeah, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily bad. It's just it just marked a moment. It did. It was super successful. It did great, you know. But um, it could have been better. Was there a, a moment or an incident that kind of brought you up out of the funk? I mean, did you have like a turning point On, I, at that I, point when you were like really down and the album wasn't out yet? Um, just just completing the album just felt like a huge achievement, you know what I mean? So even though I knew it could have been better, I was just working with the tools that I had at the time, you know what I mean? And like, we had to get that record out, so we just did. And listen, I can't even, I can't even really listen to that second record anymore. It kind of makes me sad. How does the throat feel now? I mean, is it like it never happened? Or do you just have to do like a physical therapy regimen? Yeah, like I, I still do like um, a, a stringent vocal regime on show days. On a day off, I'll have a day off. Um, but yeah, it just, it just opened my eyes. I'm, you know, I'm a professional singer and I'm getting older and I have to look after it. I'm not a kid, just jamming with your mates a couple of times a week. I'm on tour for eight weeks at a time, doing like 50 shows in like 70 days. You know what I mean? It's like that shit doesn't look after itself pretty much. Are you feeling like totally more responsible and mature now? Yeah. I mean, today's the last show. Like, this has been nearly, nearly an eight week tour. I'm definitely end of the end of the line now. So I'm feeling it. So I need, need need a break, but it's okay. I got one more. Left. Does this mean no pranks and no party tonight? You guys no, I mean it means the complete opposite. <laughs> it means totally let her hair down. We have a month off after tonight, and then we uh, have another two week tour, middle of November, early December, and then we're done. Making new records. Where's the November December bit? South America. Uh, everyone seems to be going to South America. For the, is this your first time there? Yeah. It seems like South America is getting a ton of metal bands for the first mm -hmm. time this year. It's yeah. like they just open the floodgates and everybody's going down there. Exactly. Yeah, it's good business apparently, you know, so let's, let's get let's be part of it. Uh, so you said something about um, how the next album is already kind of in the works? Um, is it because you've the, already the, got it written? Or? No, no, the time schedule has been planned to write and record. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any material. We have bits and pieces riff-wise kicking around, uh, but there's no there's no songs. It's just all bits of Lego at the minute, so we'll throw it all together. What's the writing process like for you guys? Is it similar? from album to album, or does it change? Um, no, like, because of the way our second record came out, going back to that again, we wrote pretty much a lot of that on the road, 
because our first record blew up so quick, like globally, we just we were on tour for three years on that record. So we kind of thought, okay, let's you know ride the wave of that kind of momentum and success. And we wrote it on the road, got the studio, and then this happened. It was like, oh fuck. So every you know it was just kind of a bad recipe to focus on too many things at one time. So now these days we you know we you know touring, touring, writing's writing, recording's recording, chilling's chilling. Everything has its own little place. You know. So once you guys get into the studio, um, does everybody bring a piece, or does one person kind I'll, of? I'll pretty much take the shape the reins. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to get in this in our rehearsal room for probably like two, three weeks max. Whatever happens in that two or three weeks is the foundation of the start of the record. Everything. If we have five songs, we have five songs. We write the rest in the studio. Then, as long as we have that formula and that basis of where we know where we're going, the album kind of writes itself. Then, you know, so it's, it takes like two or three songs of like, yeah, those three fit perfectly. And then the rest just kind of does its thing. And obviously, after this album, if you're not happy with that in the time, you'll just take more time. Yeah, there's no rush these days. You know? I mean, we've kind of established ourselves now, so there's still lots of work to do, you know. But you know, I don't think anyone's going in here fine wise, you know. In looking to the future, are you guys um, focused strictly on Bullet for My Valentine, or are you feeling like? Maybe somebody's going to want to take off, do a side project mm -hmm. here or there, or sit in on something else? Yeah, there's been mentions of it. I already have something in the works, but it's a time thing, you know? It's like I'm not going to neglect my baby for the sake of doing something on my own, you know what I mean? So Bullet is always a priority, so if I get a couple of months in between, you know, the writing, recording process and the release, you know, because there's always kind of a two, three month window after it's done, you know, just jump in there and maybe do something cool. Do you have anybody in mind already that you kind of like like to jam with when you get home? Yeah, we've, I've already got kind of guys in mind. Who, who are all, we've already done demos and stuff. Anyway, so. Is it stuff that's out there that I just haven't seen? or? No, this is ultra secret top secret. <laughs> so you can't even tell me who they are? No. <laughs> no, it'll spoil the surprise. So clearly there's not a name yet in the project. Or there anything. is. There is? I can't tell you that either. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. What can you tell me? It's fucking cool. Heavy. Four guys, five guys? Uh, at the moment it's just three. Three? But there will be a minimum of four. Like a power sledge trio? Not so much. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But it's cool, it's like, I've, I've got a lot of like creativity in me. I, I love to do like acoustic kind of sloppy stuff and sing a songwriter stuff. I do, you know, obviously do the bullet thing and this other project is the other side. It's like far more like Slipknot, Pantera, mm -hmm. you know, heavy. Kind of what bullet, you know, it's metal as fuck, you know what I mean? Like stepping away from the melodic, not giving a fuck formula of, uh, you know, because we obviously both for Valentine is a business and we have our formula and what we do works and it's great, so we won't stray from that. So it's nice to step out of that comfort zone and do something fucking ridiculous, you know, and not worry about what people are going to think because it, it doesn't exist yet, so it's cool. That is kind of cool, actually. Mm. I'm looking forward to that now. It's badass, honestly, you'd be very super stoked, it's cool. Is there, uh, like, a vein that you can describe it with? Just that it's going to be balls out? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, like I said, I think the most... We wanted to go in there with kind of like that Slipknot attitude of just everything, just like the I.O.R. album, just fucking violent, you know what I mean? Let it all out, no holes barred. Are you going to produce it yourself and probably, release it yeah. yourself? Yeah, probably. Yeah? yeah? Are you guys looking to start doing like some label work on your own? Because I know a lot of bands are kind of wanting I think, to help you know, bands. I, th and... I think we'll go for it. If someone wants to give us a record deal, we'll take it. It mm -hmm. saves the hard workload and you know, it I pays for itself. And, you know? I'm, sure that, I'm sure they will. Like, there's, our management already know what's going on. They're in the loop, so they've already got stuff lined up. So they so. know who it is. Yes. Yes. And you just said the rest of us have to wait for a press release or a tweet or. Yeah, but and they're they're total pros. I, I can't tell them so. <laughs> so you have to just wait for everybody to get off their tours and have spare time. And yeah, pretty much. Place. Yeah, they're all working lads themselves. So. Okay. In the business. You know. 100% pure rock. 107.7 The Bone.